We now have more information about the coming models from OpenAI, including O3 and O4 Mini. And not only that, we also have information about GPT-5. So quickly, let me take a detour. Sam Altman and team just did a long podcast explaining what it took to get GPT-4.5 out the door, and they started two years ago. And so just imagine what is going into these coming models, most of all GPT-5. Here is what he said. There are a bunch of reasons for this, this being the schedule. But the most exciting one is that we are able to make GPT-5 much better than we originally thought. We also found it harder than we thought it was going to be to smoothly integrate everything. And we want to make sure we have enough capacity to support what we expect to be unprecedented demand. Now, this is a addressing when they said just a month or so ago that they were essentially going to combine all of these models into a single model. And it turns out that's a lot harder than they thought. And not only that, they have just been getting slammed with demand, especially for the GPT-40 image generation, which has exceeded even their wildest expectations for demand. And he specifically said they don't have enough GPUs. He continues with, we were able to really improve on what we previewed for O3 in many ways, I think people will be happy. Now, Sam is also known to be a little bit hypey on X, but personally, I'm very excited that they're going to be releasing these models one at a time versus taking a bunch of time to try to put them all together. This is likely in response to the pressure from their competitors. Also, quick update on this. Hi, I'm Alex. I run production for Matt, who is busy right now, but this just happened. So I figured I would take over for this quick update. Sam also tweeted out just about an hour ago. We've got a lot of good stuff for you coming this week, kicking it off tomorrow. Now, obviously, there's a lot of speculation about what this could be. Is it a new model? Is it something like memory that was released earlier last week? Well, we've seen some leaked images of official API assets that show the kind of like backdrop image that they use for announcing these models. And they are very clearly labeled 04 Mini, GPT 4.1, GPT 4.1 Nano and GPT 4.1 Mini. So my guess is one of these four is probably what will be announced tomorrow and maybe sometime this week they'll announce the rest. It's a little unclear right now. Now back to Matt. Next, OpenAI released essentially infinite memory for ChatGPT this week. Starting today, memory and ChatGPT can now reference all of your past chats to provide more personalized responses, drawing on your preferences and interests to make it even more helpful for writing, getting advice, learning, and beyond. Now, a take that I've been seeing going around Twitter that I actually kind of agree with is that OpenAI no longer has a significant edge on just pure intelligence. And so what are they going with? personalization. And what this means is that OpenAI is going to build AI that is hyper personalized to you. It's going to know you. It's going to be able to provide better answers because it knows you so well. The intelligence of these models are becoming a commodity quickly. And so the differentiation is everything you build around them. And OpenAI, ChatGPT, has decided to go the personalization route. And this makes a lot of sense to me, especially because of this Harvard Business Review article that just came out. Through research, what they were able to show is that the number one use case for AI is therapy and companionship. And this is up from the number two use case in 2024. Now it's number one. And so having hyper-personalized AI seems to be the trend of how people are going to be using AI. Now, back to the memory, let me tell you a little bit more about it. In addition to the saved memories that were there before, it can now reference your past chats to deliver responses that feel noticeably more relevant and useful. New conversations naturally build upon what it already knows about you, making interactions feel smoother and uniquely tailored to you. This allows them to leverage the existing data that they have about you, and this is a competitive moat. The intelligence of the model is not at play here. So if you have six other open source models that are just as good as the latest OpenAI model, but the OpenAI model is able to be so much more personalized and knows so much more about you, you're probably going to go with that. So what does that mean for open source? Well, we probably need some kind of memory standard for open source, very similar to how MCP is working now as a standard. We need a standard for agent memory. 
So as always, you're in control of ChatGPT's memory. You can opt out referencing past chats or memory altogether at any time. And if you want to know what ChatGPT knows about you, just ask in the chat and it'll tell you. This is rolling out to all Plus and Pro users and likely going to be to free but obviously registered users soon enough. So now from closed source, let's move to open source. Together AI partnered with the Agentica team just released a new awesome coding model, super efficient. So Deep Coder 14B, an O1 and O3 mini level coding reasoning model fully open sourced. They released the data set, the code and the training recipe. This is the definition of open source AI. So as we can see, it is a very efficient model in line with R1 distilled 14B. We have O3 mini low and O1 all the way up here. Don't even know the model parameter size, but probably very large. And over here we can see the live code bench benchmark and it is on par with O3 mini low. Really, really impressive for the size. And of course it's a coding model, so I cannot wait to plug it into my vibe coding tools. So if you want to try it out, go download it. You can recreate it yourself. If you have a bunch of GPUs laying around, you can fine tune it. You can download the model weights. You can review the training process. It's awesome. It's open source. Go check it out. And let's continue on the open source train. Deep Cogito, I think I'm pronouncing that right, is a new company and just released a brand new open source model. This is Cogito V1 Preview Llama 70B. So it is obviously based on Llama 3, not 4, 3. So Cogito models are hybrid reasoning models. Each model can answer directly like a standard LLM, or they can use thinking tokens. The models have been optimized for coding, STEM, instruction following, and general helpfulness, and have significant significantly higher multilingual coding and tool calling abilities than size equivalent counterparts. So here are some of the benchmarks. So for non reasoning, we have the comparison to Llama 3.370 B basically the model it was based on and we can see a pretty substantial performance increase across the board. And then for reasoning, we also have it compared to DeepSeek R1 Distill 70B, and it really just beats it across the board as well. Now, why is this important? This is obviously not comparable to the cutting edge models. Well, this is a very efficient model that we can run locally fairly easily, and it's fantastic. And so as these larger models continue to get better, we will continue to get smaller models that are better, that we can run locally without internet, full control, and so, this is just really great for the open source community. And it not only comes in 70B, it comes in a variety of sizes below that as well, including 3 billion and 14 billion parameters. Next, Midjourney came out with V7 and it kind of went under the radar a little bit with all of the love going to GPT-40 image generation. And I've seen a lot of disappointed sentiment online about V7, especially because we just got such a great image generation model from OpenAI. But competition is Good, let's read. We're gonna let the community test an alpha version of our V7 starting now. It's an amazing model. It's much smarter with text prompts, image prompts, and it looks fantastic. The image quality is noticeably higher. And they have something called draft mode. So our next flagship feature is draft mode. Draft mode is half the cost and renders images at 10 times the speed. It's so fast that we changed the prompt bar to a conversational mode when you're using it on the web. So basically, the second you actually submit the prompt, you're getting back that image. And that is very different from GPT-40 image generation, which takes sometimes 60 seconds, 120 seconds to generate a single image. And so they have two versions that they're launching, Turbo and Relax. It's exactly what it sounds like. The Turbo mode, very fast, and very efficient. All right, and next, Toby Lucky, Shopify CEO, is going all in on AI. He has told his company, if you're not using AI, you don't belong at the company, basically. And so he wrote an internal memo and he said it was gonna be leaked, so he released it himself. Let's take a look at a couple key parts of this memo. He says, basically, merchants are gonna be able to do more with Shopify more than ever imagined because of AI. He also says that he uses AI more than ever and it's only scratching the surface. I use it all the time, but even I feel I'm only scratching the surface. It's the most rapid shift to how work is done that I've seen in my career, and I've been pretty clear about my enthusiasm for it. And how does he suggest 
to learn about AI? Well, to use it a lot. And that's really all there is. There's obviously a lot of great resources out there. Definitely, by the way, quick plug, check out forwardfuture.ai. That's our newsletter. And we also share a ton of learning material and more to come, by the way. So forwardfuture.ai, check it out. Now, here is the key. Using AI effectively is now a fundamental expectation of everyone at Shopify. This is going to be what happens in the workforce. It is not going to be AI replaces people. It is going to be people using AI replace people who don't use AI. And I've been saying that for a while. So keep that in mind. Keep learning. Keep trying the tools. Most of all, there is nothing that can replace just using it. So he goes on to say AI must be part of the prototyping phase. Anytime you're prototyping anything, AI must be a core part of that. And he's also putting it in performance reviews. So we will add AI usage questions to our performance and peer review questionnaire. It is so important. They are going to be grading their employees on how much they use AI and how well they use it. And before asking for more headcount and resources, teams must demonstrate why they cannot get what they want done using AI, which I think is incredibly smart. AI is able to make every single employee so much more productive that if you can't get something done with AI, that is the only time in which you should be hiring somebody. So I think this is a great internal memo. Check it out. Link down below. Next, finally, Grok3 has an API. This has shown to be one of the best coding models out there, really one of the best models, period. And now we can actually hook it up to an API. Why is this important, though? Well, I want to see it in Vibe coding tools. Also, wrap it in agents. And there's just so many different use cases that cannot be done through the standard UI with Grok directly. So very excited about this. Let's take a look at some of the pricing. So the context window is actually on the smaller side, I should mention. Grok3 beta, 131,000 token context window, $3 for text input, so that's $3 per million, and $15 per million output tokens. And they also release Grok3 mini, which of course, anytime you hear mini, think more efficient and cheaper. It is a tenth of the cost, coming in at 30 cents per million text input and 50 cents per million text output. So a decently competitive price for closed source frontier models, certainly nowhere near what we can get with open source, but that's the trade off that you make. Next, the information reports that OpenAI is in talks with Johnny Ive and Sam Altman to buy their AI device startup. Now, this is all kind of crazy to me. Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, is working with Johnny Ive, which we reported a few months ago, on a really personal AI device. And for those of you who don't know who Johnny Ive is, he is basically responsible for the design of Apple products over the last 20 plus years. He left a few years ago, but the iPad, the Mac, the iPhone, all of these devices were essentially designed by Johnny Ive and his team at Apple. And as I mentioned, he was working with Sam Altman to create an AI native device. And now we know OpenAI is looking to purchase it. And maybe that was the plan all along. But it does seem kind of backwards to me that Sam Altman goes off, starts a little company, and then it gets acquired by his company. But maybe that happens. Either way, I cannot wait to see what they produce because we have yet to see a mainstream AI native device. I've tried the Rabbit. I've seen the Humane Pin. They went out of business. Siri is basically not usable at all, and all Apple intelligence is garbage. So there really isn't an AI native device quite yet. Maybe the closest thing is Gemini and an Android device. And this would make a lot of sense for OpenAI. As I mentioned earlier, the intelligence layer is getting commoditized. So they're making the models more personal with the memory update that we talked about. But now imagine Imagine that memory update and that hyper personal AI built into a device that you take around with you everywhere, essentially either replacing the phone or supplementing the phone, but most likely replacing it. Obviously, it needs to have all of the same functionality of a phone, but it needs to be AI native. All right. In a story that I found incredibly interesting, Microsoft is taking a fast follow approach on AI. They are basically saying, let the frontier companies burn all their money on GPUs, create the cutting edge, and then we essentially will recreate it, but better. And by the way, 
this isn't a novel Microsoft strategy. They've done this time and time again. Look at Slack and then Teams and look at Netscape and then Internet Explorer. They've done this. They basically allow the innovators to innovate and then they copy it and then mass distribute it. And this is coming from Microsoft's AI CEO, Mustafa Suleiman, who, according to this register article, said it's more cost effective to trail frontier model builders, including OpenAI, that have taken billions from the Windows giant by three to six months and build on their successes, then compete with them directly. And that continues Microsoft's strategy of diversifying away from OpenAI. They've been placing bets everywhere. They've been embracing open source. And so they really recognize their risk of being so dependent on OpenAI when OpenAI has their own ideas about what the future looks like. And it does not always align with what Microsoft believes. And he continues, it's absolutely mission critical that long term we are able to do AI self-sufficiently at Microsoft. So again, identifying their reliance and the risk of that reliance on open AI. So let me know what you think of this strategy in the comments. So that's it. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.